You are now tuned in to the Public Enemies, aka the Spark Foundation, aka Black DX, aka the Authors of Paid in Full, aka Undisputed Era Force Ones, aka the High Conics. What's happening, my people? What's happening? How y'all doing this evening? I gotta send the tweets and go hit that button. Uh, you know it's nothing. What? Yeah, I'm just like, all right, cool. Y'all, y'all ready? Y'all ready? We could, we could do the show. Yeah, let's go. Are we live? I think, I think we're, we're live. live. I think we're live. I hit the button. I hit the button right there. And when I press the button, like I press, well, the button's right here. And then I press the button. And then I press the other button. And it's like, yo, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's 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 why I pressed the button in the first place. You feel me? So yeah, bro. Pull the lever, crunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with the people salute to everybody in the push chat the that's watching live you feel me yes indeed yes indeed push the button you feel me if you live and direct watching in the chat you know what i'm saying go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you've already done that go ahead and hit that like button and if you've already done that salute to you we appreciate you make sure you follow in the squadron at the enemies pe3 on all social media platforms now that that is out of the way let's get to the gunshots Ladies and gentlemen, people with jobs, people without jobs, middle class, upper class, high class, all that. Cats, snakes, chickens, ducks, elderly people and twerkers. We present to you another edition of the Public Enemies podcast. This is episode 247 of Pro Wrestling's Breakfast Club. And uh, I go by the name, oh my God, Graham, a.k.a. Kilo Santana. Also, your brand new 100% official Public Enemy number one. Yes, indeed. Salute the Royal Rumble weekend. Mm. Salute to all of y'all that pulled up and, and, and uh, kicked it with us in celebration, uh, doing the, the aftermath, you feel me, post-show, you feel me? We appreciate that, you dig? Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Of course, not only am I here, you feel me, the public enemy number one, I'm here with the former public enemy number one. Salute to nah, the Waco bro. kid. Well, he used to be the Waco kid. What's going on with you, Ben? Nah, bro, don't do that former stuff, man. But like, you, bro, you was, you was former. You was before nah, me. nah. It's true what, what happened? <laughs> nah, nah. Because what happened when Triple H was called the former champion? He chased down Lillian Garcia. I can't, I can't fly out all the way to uh to the Bay Area. So I, 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 I just, <laughs> I oh, just gotta complain. So you Jericho now, Jericho mm-hmm. Graham. Oh, he Jericho. Oh, okay, bro. For sure. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. He's Jericho, and uh, Mister Doug Himmedon. What's going on with the guy? Jizzle, how you doing, brother? And I am hot. And okay. I am feeling, and I am being my best behavior I have to. And hello, guys. Subscribe to the Patreon because I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on there. And speaking of, like, shows coming to the Patreon, we might have something to do with, like, with comic books and superhero mm-hmm. movies and stuff like that. So... Y'all be on the lookout for that. Subscribe to the Patreon. Patreon.com slash public enemies. It's right there. You feel me? Beat us there. Don't meet us there. You know I mean it's, it's some already some ism over there for you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh hey, 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 hey. Speaking of the Patreon, you feel me? If you subscribe to the Patreon and you are a a, a, a long-term booking tier subscriber. Be on the lookout for the next Behind Enemy Lines interview with the judge himself, EJ and Duca. You know what I'm talking, about? talking about? Yeah, just want to go ahead and sprinkle that out there. You feel me? A little salt bay, a little sage, a little parsley. You feel me around these parts? You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. That's coming soon, coming soon. Stay tapped in, stay tuned in, stay dangerous. Salute to Vaughn. Public enemies are the, what do you say, the the, the Avengers of, of podcasting? Let's get right into it, man. Small package news. Small package news. I want to first say uh, salute to <clears throat> Impact Wrestling. You know what they did? They signed Dirty Dango. <laughs> Yo, he's calling himself that now? Yeah. It's Dirty Dango now. It's not Fandango, of course, because you know you gotta you gotta be able to own that. He ain't he ain't got the juice like that. You know what I'm saying? You really gotta have the juice like that to really just walk away with your ism like that. You feel me? But signed over there, Impact Wrestling. So they also gave uh, Tasha Steele a little bit of time off. It seems if uh, 
Well, she, of course, just uh, re-signed uh, with Impact. I believe that is a long-term deal, but uh, she did request uh, some personal time off. For what reason? I don't know. We don't know. That's neither here nor there. None of my business. I just want to salute Natasha Steeles because I would love mm. to build you a Tesla or buy you a house. <laughs> mm. Yo, man. Which way, you know. Yeah, do it. <laughs> I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. She, she won't. She won't hit me back. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm too scared to reach out. She's a Borico badass. You feel me? I'm scared. Sometimes you have you though. You've seen right four brothers. Hey, yo, that's that's actually pretty funny. That is actually pretty hey, funny. Yo. I'm, <laughs> I'm yes. like yo. Mm -hmm. Fandango changing his name, like he definitely had to change his name, bro. Because you can't. First, you got to fight WWE, and then you got to fight the 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 dudes who sell the tickets online. You got to fight both of them for that name. It, it, it ain't worth it at that point. It's rough out here. It's definitely <laughs> rough out here. For sure. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, he's definitely built That's like crazy. Zion. For sure. Let's go ahead and push forward. I want to go ahead and send a big action salute to our friends over in the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, I saw a uh, little 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 blurb on this little little oh, blog site I'll be on. You feel me? Yeah. So uh, Bob the Drag Queen, you may uh, know from RuPaul's Drag Race or HBO's We Here, uh, recently did an interview where. Uh, conversation kind of came around to pro wrestling and mentioned that uh, in his early years, in his adolescence, uh, <laughs> gold dust kind of uh, embodied or reminded him of like Prince because it was like <laughs> gold dust was like really effeminate, but at the same time, like he always had girlfriends, you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, but <clears throat> just due to the uh, controversialness and the, extraness of the character uh bob said that uh you know gold does kind of tap in and be more comfortable with his gayness uh, around that time uh also did mention that mick foley uh was uh his favorite wrestler ever of all time and uh actually cried uh real tears when he retired i was like come on man not my guy not my guy that's the guy. He went through a whole sale, blood. He went through a whole sale. But yeah. come on, man. I can't do this no more. Right. <laughs> oh. Speaking of people going through things, you know, when you go through things, come out on the other side. You gotta see the silver lining. You know what I'm saying? Rough situations. Fight open. Salute to three times crazy. Uh also salute to Kota Ibushi. Officially a free agent. Um, New Japan. Mm -hmm. Funny thing, New Japan released a uh, future endeavor statement that was really funny. It was like, come on, they're like, you can't really do that. Like, I, I left you. Like, I was I'm out. Like, I was like, like no. <laughs> not only, oh my God. not only did I leave, I made it public knowledge that I was leaving. I was like, hey, bro, you got some suckers over here, man. Like yo, you know what they doing backstage? Not you know the crooked, you know the you, you know the crooked stuff that's yeah, going on back here. Like nah, it's bro. Crazy. Like y'all ain't y'all ain't leave me. <laughs> Cast from NBC. I left y'all, bro. From ABC, the couple, <laughs> the couple from ABC that left together. He said, "Uh, no, 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 I'm it's gone. not me. I've been telling you on. Uh, it's you." Uh, Coda, um, it has been announced for GCW the Collective. Uh, Joey Janela's spring break and also uh, Bloodsport. He'll be facing speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, I believe he also did a uh, comment on uh, his departure from New Japan. He mentioned, huh, salute to peeps. Um, uh, he mentioned that uh, he understands, like, you know, the conversation around, oh, people might think he's going to go to AEW or whatever. Uh, maybe not quite yet at this moment, but he does expect to talk to them. And uh, Tony Khan made it quite evident that uh, he would like to sign Kota Ibushi. So, hey. Yo, who wouldn't? D Get Khan on the phone. Duh. Dummy. You know Paul, exactly. they pay me. Jayla Ramsey. Like, yo, man. He, I, I'm scared that he's going to get over to GCW and like to, that there's no rules about anything. 
and just be like, yo, man, I kick it over you. Because you've seen the videos of him, like, having matches, and he just pulls out fireworks and just starts firing at, at other people, firing mm-hmm. at himself. Like, he could like he could make a life for himself over there. <laughs> you talking about that one clip where he, like, in the middle of the street, shooting out the yeah. gym? Oh. Like, bro, <laughs> what is my G doing right now? Like, hey, I'm with it, though. That was fire. Saucy. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it, man. Let's go ahead and Look, get right into it, You can fight Dark right now. You, I know. My Dino my. They did the little dynamite oh, yeah. thing, right? Yeah, it was in, uh, Where was that? It was in Ohio. They were somewhere in Ohio. in Ohio. Ohio. Salute to Bow Wow. Uh, yeah. The acclaimed, oh, they had a match losers. against. I don't the know who they had a match there. against. I think it was some twins. And then they had that little thing where they, you know, you know, uh, the, the, what's his name? Billy Gunn. He was, he was still mad. He was mad at them. Uh, they opened the show with Hangman Page and Moxley in a barn burner, hard hitting, bam, 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 bam. Oh. They tried to make a blasting. Like, I'm really yeah, yeah. finna hit you. Yeah. That, yeah. I didn't really want to salute to JR. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, bro. Starting out like that, I, I was intrigued because I was just, I was doing something. I was like, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and I looked up at mm-hmm. my phone and I was like, oh, I was like, so they fighting, fighting. <laughs> I was like, yo, this man saw everything that Adam Page was saying. This man was pulling up to his wife like, hey, bro, like, well, what are your plans for the future? He's like, hey, look, man, I'm just trying to knock out your husband one more time. That's that's what I'm trying to do. You the pulls up. He's like, hey, you the, I knock you out too, bro. Don't like, yo, you coming over here talking sweet. I knock you out too. <laughs> like, bro, I had to sit at home, watch all of that. So I was like, yeah, I, like, damn right. Like he just jump and ta- at attack him before the match started. I would too. A- any man with some dignity and, and, and some self pride, you know, would, would go out there and do that. He said, "I'm on your bumper." Respect that. I'm on your bumper. You know what I mean? Talk Moxley about- ended up picking up the win. Chisel, what'd you think about it? No man, this man. No, listen, listen, man. Joe Burrow lost. You know what I'm saying? I'm all. Already upset and spoke. Hangman Page, what are you talking about, son? Like, I'm already upset. You've been talking junk to my wife. Nah, son, you gotta lose. I appreciated that. You gotta get one win, not to get in smoke twice, and then get two interviews with my wife about it. Nah, dog. Nah, I gotta beat you once, and I'm gonna bleed. First five minutes in there, you know what I'm saying? Just like Brock Purdy injury. First five minutes, boom, blood. Hey, hey yo. <laughs> Weed Man Wade says they got to start a new best of seven series. Give us four more matches. Hey. Sean says nah, look, uh, Mox look. needs to let the blood out to fire up. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, that best of seven one. <laughs> like, bro, I, I love I love them both too much to let that happen because, like, <laughs> somebody, somebody ain't walking away completely. <laughs> Somebody gonna be limping away. You're not gonna see somebody on TV for like four or five months. Like, bro, hey, y'all can have one more match at the most. Like, bro, yeah. if the first, if the very first match y'all had starts out with like somebody getting getting knocked out for real, it's just a sign. Like, hey, we lucky with the other two that we got. But and both of them just had kids too. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, listen, listen, man. Look, we both want to do stuff. We both want vacations. Like, like Moxley still has a vacation saved up like a game breaker. Like, listen, I'm, I'm going to get this vacation eventually. I'm going to put Hangman over, and then I need to take this. I need to hang out with my kid, chill with Joe Burrow and hey. Jamar Chase, learn how to do the gritty right. And then, listen, what am I supposed hey, to look, do? Man. But look, it, it, he read his script, and vacation wasn't in the script, bro. It, it wasn't in the script. Damn. Twice. <laughs> like, why does this keep happening? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Marvel. Oh. <laughs> My dog signed a whole new deal. <laughs> Couldn't get vacation in his script. That was wild, man. <laughs> Yo, like Joe Budden. these dudes, they got me to watch. They got me to watch Brian Cage match two weeks in a row. And I'm I'm starting to feel like this is a personal <laughs> indictment. Like like what is going on? Like like do y'all really feel some way about me? Did I say something? Did I do something? Like d- d- is the swole interview still rubbing people the wrong way? 
<laughs> Yo. Like, what, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? And then I thought to myself, there, there was a commercial break. And I said, wait a second, we're giving Brian Cage a commercial break? And then I said, wait, wait, hold on. Chill out, chill out, chill out. This match is for this this match is for Takeshita. <laughs> this match is for Takeshita. Let me backtrack real quick. My apologies. I apologize. You feel me? Yes. Uh, Takeshita picked up the win. Uh, they then set up like a, I guess, a, oh, they set up a match with Takeshita and MJF next week on Dynamite because he came out uh, and mm-hmm. tried to funk with MJF. They was brawling backstage and all of that. And Tony Khan was like, nah, it's official. Well, Tony Khan was like, nah, it's official. Renee was like, I, I think uh, 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 per Tony Khan next week. Yeah. So they did that. Nah, uh, bro, MJF. Like, it, yo. Go ahead. Y'all, he's like, yo, y'all don't talk to y'all don't talk directly to me. You talk to Renee and you tell Renee to talk to me. You got that? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I, she, she's my liaison. You feel me? She's my <laughs> liaison. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah, they did that. Uh so Brian Danielson faced word. Timothy Thatcher. Jizzle, did you see this match with Timothy Thatcher? Uh the God from Sacramento, uh against the God from uh, the Aberdeen, Washington. Hey, man. <laughs> who's who's repping? Yo, get Seattle in stat. Yeah, man, I didn't see that, but I already know how it went because I know how Timothy Thatcher get down, and I know how old Goat Danielson get down, and then it's going to be moves, holds, more moves, more holds, punches in the face, kicks in the leg. Stomps in the foot, stomps on the hand, pokes in the eye. And you know what I'm saying? That's right up my alley. You know what I'm saying? We got two goats going on. You know what I'm saying? And you you say you got to put people over and then win at the same time. And this is why it set up whatever happened next after this match, which is going to happen after this match, which is Graham's going to tell us right now. Tell us, Graham. I actually told you guys already I switched to the program. So <laughs> what happened at the end of the bat, they was like brawling or whatever. And uh, MJF tried to come out and he tried to sway the the, the match the other way. Um, and then uh, Takeshita actually came out, blocked him off. They started the brawl uh, backstage and all of that. And then the match ended kind of abruptly um, with just a quick little German. And you feel me? Swept under him real quick and then hit him with the psycho knee. And you know what I'm saying? Danielson was out of there. But I, I will say uh, Thatcher was like the perfect person to have this match against uh, Danielson because he was working over that shoulder like crazy, my G. And it was like really like funking, like like it was a real like street fight. Ben, go ahead. What you think uh, about it? Hey, bro, I, I liked it. Uh, I liked it a lot. I liked that, you know, we were getting technical matches right on this episode. But the other thing I did like was, you know, shout out to Sean. He said technical wrestling week. But – the thing that, you know, got me the most is this week, like last week after it was announced, everybody was like, yo, so so Thatcher ain't from the UK. <laughs> so 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 he's American. <laughs> and, and let me tell y'all, bro, for the longest, before he ever cut a promo, before I ever seen him cut a promo, I was calling this man a UK legend. I was yo. like, yo, I was like, yo. <laughs> This man, I was like, yo, this man is the UK legend. And somebody was like, hey, yo, you know, he, you know, he's from Sacramento, right? I was like, I was like, they got, I was like, they got shit in the UK called like Sacramento. I was like, Sacramento, London. I was like, yo, Sacramento, <laughs> Wales, or something like that. What, what, what are we talking about, bro? My son Sacramento said Wales. Wales. <laughs> but I'm like, going to Wales, bro. Sacramento, Wales is crazy. But I was like, bro. I was watching it, and he like, like you said, Graham, like he was doing, he was working over the shoulder. They was getting technical. I really like that. And, and this whole series of matches that Brian Danielson has been having leading up to this has been showing, like, yo, I'm, I'm not just like a submission guy. Like he, like you see him get, um, like pull out the spots with, uh, with Bandito. You saw him last week, uh, doing the striking with. Takeshka, or whatever week that was, the week before last, Brian Cage, you know, he was doing, like, he was getting thrown around. And this week, you know, we get some more technical back. So he's been showing, like, yo, I got a lot of styles. I know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I I really like that. 
Uh, throw to a couple of comments in the chat here real quick. Vaughn says, Goldberg hates this week of wrestling. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Ken says, Graham, Jizzle, y'all ain't inform us that Thatcher was from the soil. He's not. He's from Sacramento. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Ken, you know what I'm saying? He's from Sacramento. That don't say it don't count. You know what I'm saying? It's not yeah, Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? We're all from Northern Over California. There. Uh we're from the Bay Area. <laughs> he's from Sacramento. That's yeah, that you your own team. <laughs> Yeah, like, so the exactly. so, like the beam over so there. So when he come down in there, so when he come down to the bay, does, does he check in with y'all? Does he be like, yo? <laughs> no, he check in with Jizzle. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you, you, that mall, you say you shopping at the Bay Area mall, dog. You gotta talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Doug him a dome. You know what I'm saying? Last like, bro, comment in the chat on this match. Uh, MCG says D. Bry, her Bree uh, had a few drinks and was getting on Insta Live again. Yeah, she was in Bree mode. She was showing Bree mode. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro. she had them people ready to leave man yeah black you had the black people in the back that was at the game they was just like yo plotting their exit i know what that looks like man i know what that feels like I, i've been out to places and you see people drunk you see what you see white women drunk going crazy and you're like bro how can i get out of this building in, in the quickest fashion how can I get out of here? They weren't too lucky because they stayed for a while. One place that's how you know you say I'm, I'm on my way out. I make two plates. Two plates and I'm gone. <laughs> um, so, oh, note. Uh, AEW announced that uh, they're going to start doing house shows, house rules. Uh, tickets go on sale uh, this Friday. I believe it's like March 18th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there's going to be like select weekends. Of course, it's going to be uh, in Ohio mm-hmm. as well. Uh, so that's why they announced it today. And of course, the poster boy for that show is John Moxley. So uh, make sure y'all pull up. That's not really a bad idea, like doing house shows, but doing it in a way like um, like NXT does, does their house shows. The like, they, Yeah, yeah. They don't run them like every single week. Like they might do like three shows one weekend in a month or, you know, like here and there. And they'll pick an area where they just go around and then they yeah. just, you know, go back to wherever they're doing. Like I've been to like a few NXT house shows and like that was the whole like the show. I don't know if the shows are going to be like that where it's like a more intimate setting or they're going to get like uh, or do bigger arenas for these house shows. But either way, I think it's a good idea. Like you get your guys to get more reps in instead of doing like the, the two shows a week, they get to, you know, have more, get more reps in while, you know, working for you instead of going out there and like doing the Indies or going to Japan or working some other company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see what, uh, what those look like. I mean, of course there'll be house shows, mm-hmm. so we won't Turn see what those look like. Hate but, the most, huh? That's what they brought Jeff Jarrett in for, you know, Bree Woo. Like, oh, hey, man. bro, you, you, like, bro, he was like, oh, I don't want to do house shows no more. And they was like, yeah, bro, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Jeff. House shows. <laughs> house shows. So uh, yeah. what did you guys think uh, about? I ain't paying the... more than $8 for a ticket. And they started 20 <laughs> Jade Cargill's 50th uh, match, 49 and 0 going in against Red Velvet here uh, this evening as we're recording. Salute to everybody listening on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever you choose, by the way. Uh, yeah, uh, Jade Cargill, Red Velvet. They dropped this on a dynamite. I thought the build would have been a little bit more grandiose than, than what this was. But uh, yeah, this is what we got for match 50. I thought the ladies worked hard. Uh, it wasn't really that long of a match, but they gave Red Velvet like the visual win, you know, while the ref was distracted and, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, all that good stuff, you know. Uh, nice little uh, little reversal uh, into uh, – I can't remember what her finish is called right now. I can't remember what her finish is called right now. But uh, nice little reversal into that, similar to what she did with Sky Blue, but just like a different variation of it. And uh, yeah, Jay got the win, fifty and zero. Ben, what do you think? Yeah, man, I think like I you think she's that. getting better, bro. Because you know, a lot of people was like, "Oh, well, you know, 
well, she's not really that good because that was the whole thing at the beginning. Uh, well, you know, she she has a star presence, but she's not that good in the ring. And then like we see like over the last like however many matches, she's improving her style. Like you said, like the reversal, like with Sky Blue, it um, mm-hmm. it, it was just like bro, she she's getting there. She's training with. Brian Danielson and she's getting into reps and everything like that. And 50 and O uh and is just it's just crazy. And on top of like, yo, we're using real numbers. This isn't like what what we're doing with Goldberg, where he come out uh one week and it's like, oh, he's 27 and oh, and then the next week he's 47 and oh, and it's just like, bro, y'all, y'all running like 20 house shows in the middle of the week. Like, what's going on? I mean, like, what's the they- deal? They did give her like a couple of like tag team wins as like singles wins, though. They did do that. They did that. I get. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's still not it's as still bad. What? As it's still not. As <laughs> no, like, yo. <laughs> AEW was the ones that told us we the ones keeping track of wins and losses. You got your singles wins, you got your tag wins, you got your trios wins, you got your 2020 wins, your 2021 losses, your 2022, uh, your 2023. That's now shit. all of a sudden it don't matter. Goldberg blood. I don't like Goldberg. Okay. Hey, like, bro, that whole wins and losses thing, Goldberg. and they learned that quick. Yeah, Real yeah, quick, that the wins and losses thing in wrestling, it looks good on paper. It, it sounds it sounds really appealing. If somebody's like, yeah, man, we can count the wins and losses, and whoever has the most wins is going to get the title shot. Yeah, that sounds great. But when you have your number one contender who has the most matches sitting on there for, like, I don't know, two months, and you haven't given the title match, it sort of makes your whole wins and losses, like, argument look crazy. And mm. I was happy when they kind of stepped back from that because it, it made, like, it made no sense. Like you got, like you got, um, whoever sitting on that list for like however long, and it's like, okay, well, when when is she to get in the title match? Okay, well, she's been number one contender for like six weeks. When 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 she gonna get the title match? And then they FTR, go with like some, the, somebody else. FTR was tag title contenders for like uh, number one contenders for like <laughs> six months, <laughs> and it was like. Mm. You guys can go to Mexico for a week or two. Get out of here. Just get out of here. <laughs> it was like, go somewhere. You feel me? They did that. They did that whole joint. You feel me? Uh, Swerve had a pre-tape. Uh, also, uh, this little match right here, uh, I guess it was the main event. No holes barred. Oh, actually, you know what? Before that, they set up a uh, trios tag match next week uh, with the Elite and uh, Top Flight and AR Fox for the titles. Had Big Swole at number uh, one contender for two, three months. Oh, yeah, uh, it was like uh, nine weeks. Uh, do it. They gave the title shot before she became number one contender. And then, they, yeah, they gave her like an eliminator match. And then, uh, yeah, it was like, I think it was an eliminator match. And then she uh, became number one contender. And then they was like, mm, nah. But you know, if you guys want to hear more about that, you're more than welcome to check out our interview with Big Swole. <laughs> yeah. really, like they had another um they had another setup for the trios ta- for um the tag titles against uh Ethan Page, Matt Hardy, against- and Isaiah Cassidy. Yeah. He he orgasmed in Kenny Omega's ear. Bro, he saw yo man, and the way Kenny pulled back in in into like this. He pulled back and got his hands ready too. He was like, "Hey, bro, look, stranger danger." I'm a look, bro. I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> Speaking of Kenny Omega, uh, uh, if you noticed recently, he wasn't on uh, Dynamite for the last couple of weeks. Uh, it was because he was going through some visa issues, trying to get some documentation and some isms cleared up. And then, hey, now he's back. So, he's getting right to it. Match on Rampage this uh, this Friday tonight. And then uh, a match uh, next week, and uh, back to the grind, man. Back to the grind. Kenny Omega, two matches already uh, slotted in a possible match of the year contender. So uh, we'll see where we go from here. We'll see where we go from here. So where we go from here is the No Holds Barred match, which was uh, Samoa Joe and Darby Allin for the TNT Championship. And I'm not going to hold y'all. I was like, okay. Uh, Darby gonna Darby gonna get you know what I'm saying he gonna get his boot smoke 
And then, you know, he going to come back at the end and be like, bam, quick little roll up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, what did I say last week? I said, boom. Oh, okay. So they booked a no holds barred match with Samoa Joe and Darby Allen. This is how you get Wardlow back involved. Verbatim. Those were the words I said. And then I thought, okay, cool. Somewhere along the lines, Wardlow is going to come in. Uh, he did, but I thought he was like going to actually affect the outcome of the match. My nigga, bro, like, why you do that? Cause like, you could have helped Darby, my G. Like, you really like, had a problem. Like, why would you let Samoa Joe win the match? Like, <laughs> like bro, I, I don't, I don't get that either. And I, I really don't like how, like, they felt they needed to take the title off of Samoa Joe to incorporate Darby somehow into this story. Like, you could have still had Darby pop up. Darby just be popping up in everybody else's matches. He be popping up in everybody else's storylines and not having anything to do with it. Like, yo, just add Darby to the match. It, it's not that hard. Just, just you don't, you didn't need to take the title off of Samoa Joe because now it makes Darby look crazy that he won the title and you taking it back off him two weeks later. I know that's the intrigue with Darby that it's like, yo, you don't know when he's going to lose the title. At any time he defends the title, he might lose it. I know. You know, that's everybody's <laughs> team with him. That's a dream. But, like, bro, it, it just ended up making them look crazy having him lose it this soon. Would that be considered yeah, a baby switch if they that's not only had switch. him that's win just, the title? That's just, but, I don't know what I'm doing. So, yo, I don't know what I'm that's doing. That's just doing, dog. Like, listen, I needed to have Samoa Joe had the belt anyway. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Like, Warlow could do anything. Like, Warlow is your, like, what, what are you doing, dog? Like, people talk about the Intercontinental Championship booking and then the U.S. title booking, and then, like, look at what you're doing right now. You didn't have to have some more, like, you just wanted to get Darby in there and be jumping off stuff. So you want Darby to jump off some stuff to Samoa Joe, but Samoa Joe's going to catch him in Warlow anyway. Come on, man. Like, just say you don't know what you're doing. It's all good. Don't tag hoodie. Yeah, bro, I had a thumb tag hoodie jumped off the back. I was like, yo, he went out there, pulled up the tarp, and Samoa Joe dropped him on, like, the, the ring with the tarp pulled back and the padding pulled back. I was like, yo, this man is sick. This man is definitely sick. But, yo, man, when we get past uh, Darby, we get past Wardlow and all that, all that mess, king of television is bad, bro. Put some respect on his name, bro. King of TV. Down the Marco, Marco. Bang, 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 bang. Back up in here. Bang. Two title Joe, bro. Mr. All Days Off said Darby a jobber now. <laughs> Turn it up, bro. Hey, Turn yo. it up. Exactly. Yo, put Scotty, yo, Scotty too hotty up in here, bro. Oh. Turn that shit up. Yeah, that's funny. All right. Um, let's see. Want to go to question of the week? Yeah, man. Let's go to question of the week. I mean, we could. We don't have to. I lost my mail key. Damn, like, like, like I really, like I really did DJ lose Clue. my mail key. Though. I'm not gonna hold y'all. Like I really lost my mail key. I gotta go get another one made. You know how expensive keys are these days? Like it's crazy. Like, it's, it's wild, bro. Like it don't make no type sense. Well, I know right now. Right now, ten dollars. Uh, this week we asked, "What is your favorite pay per view song of all time?" Because there was like people with people uh, people were shitting on Hardy, bro. It was like, hey man, this man is not good. The song's not good. The performance is not good. So we asked you guys to tell us what you did. Like, uh, shout out to Sean Slate. He posted a video. We're not trying to get hit with no with no copyright claim. We already got enough stuff on YouTube. Uh, the song that he had said was shout out to um. J Head Rocker, who gave us the name, uh, is called It Follows by Kane Hill for uh, an NXT takeover. Uh, shout out to Ken. Ken said, there's a lot that come to mind, but if I have to choose one, it would be Headstrong by Trap from uh, Bloodline 2003. Sheesh. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Bad Blood. I said Bloodline. I'm sorry. My heart's still broken. Same thing. Yo. Shout out to Sweeney Hub 94. The end is near Armageddon 2003. All right. Uh, Sober Munchies 92. Crack Addict. 
Limp Biscuit, WrestleMania 19. Okay. Yo, shout out to Eric at Mr. Mom76 says, My Way by Limp Biscuit, WrestleMania 17. Hey, that's an all timer, bro. Hmm. It's an all timer. Uh, fight from SummerSlam 2002. Jim Johnston was cooking at No Bad Noel. Mm. Yo, yo, shout out to uh, shout out to Chan, man. He said, "My way, Limp Biscuit, WrestleMania 17." Okay. Go this. Uh, shout out to Young Black underscore Man Terry. He said, uh, "SummerSlam to, uh, 2021 up by Cardi B." All right. Yo, <laughs> shout out to MM Benny too. Says sacrifice WrestleMania 38. Really addicted to the festival feel of a good WrestleMania. Hey, yo, the weekend pulling up all, getting them all them, uh, getting all the checks, bro. He took the check from Flo Rida. He took the check from Pitbull. Took the check from like, bro. But yo, man, y'all, y'all ain't never coming back over here. You know how many songs I got on this album? And it, and and this album dropped like two years ago, bro. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I think uh, he dropped a whole new album since then, actually. <laughs> like, yeah, bro. Yeah, I think this new song yeah. is uh, from the from the from the uh, more recent album. By the way, Flo Rida just won a lawsuit for eighty two million dollars. Eighty two million dollars, blood. I ain't worried about no WrestleMania, nothing. No, I'll buy that right now. Money. He's never getting that money. Oh yeah. Shout out not. to <laughs> shout out to Alf Pipe Thirteen. Kinda was a pay per view theme UK tournament, and then it got used for NXT UK. Slight bias towards the song, but it was my cousin's old band. Dusted is the name of the song. Uh, shout out to True Heel Heat Wrestling. Hey gang, yo! Shout out to y'all, man. Uh, there's my way at WrestleMania 17, and then there's every other pay per view song. Hey. <laughs> I I got I gotta agree. Mine is different, but uh, my choice is different. But I gotta agree. Uh, shout out to Michael Colvin at Michael six zero seven nine one one six nine. Damn, bro, that's a lot of numbers. Hey, he says always by saliva for SummerSlam two thousand and two. Yeah, bro. Okay, let me read. Uh, I'll read a couple more of these. Uh, at AD Legend 21, Rise by David Guetta. Dang, bro. Mm. I, ain't, I ain't heard nothing from David Guetta in a long time. There was one on here that I saw that I really liked. I can't find it. Uh, shout out to at noob underscore n underscore cotv says hero by skillet. Yo, you had SmackDown versus Raw 2010. That one, that one was always playing, bro. Turn that up. I didn't even know there was a Christian rock band for like the longest time. I saw like they was on uh, Christian <laughs> some Christian <laughs> channel they were on, and they were doing a whole concert. And I was like, "Yo, Skillet is performing!" And then the guy stopped like mid set. The front man was like, "Yo, man, I just want to say a quick prayer." It's like, "Yo, I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." I was like, "Yo, y'all Christian rock band." I never would have, never would have guessed. Uh, let's see. Shout out to at J Headrocker says random takeover used Ricky by Denzel Curry. Hey, that's a good one too. That's a good one too. Uh, shout out, shout out to wrestling fan says shine down. I dare you. WrestleMania twenty two. One more that I, that I saw that I really liked. I can't find it. I should start bookmarking these. Uh, let me read. I'll read one more. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, shout out to shout out to Daryl T underscore thirteen. Low key, Kevin Rudolph and Lil Wayne went crazy on Let It Rock. A A. That's hilarious. Yo, hey, yo, I'm on. Uh, I learn, I become the fire. That's an that's an all time, bro. Like, uh, Graham, what's yours? 
I don't have one. You wrestling fans are different, bro. I bro, I don't know what these songs are, bro. Hey, you you hey, I I barely pay attention to commentary. I don't know niggas theme songs. I'm just I, letting I, you know, bro. Oh, you like, no, 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 no. Different, you talk bro. starting line on this on this podcast. You talked about That's, starting line on this podcast, Graham. Don't do that to me. I'm talking about now, bro. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, bro, like first of all, that's this a classic. Not now. This is back then. <laughs> that's a classic, hey. first of all. <laughs> hey, I remember when we was in a group chat and like, we were talking about, like, hey, do y'all be do y'all be going medic. to the gym? Y'all be going to the gym and listening to wrestling theme songs. And I was like, yeah, sometimes you know, pop up on shuffle. Graham was like crucifying me, like, bro, you really do that? You really do that? I was like, yeah, sometimes. You listen to wrestling theme songs in your free time. I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> it just pops up, like you know. So sometimes I'll just be. No, just sometimes I'll just be up there. Sometimes I'll, I'll be. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be lifting weights and you know your evolutionist mystery, and I'll just be like, "Hey, bro, we 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 getting the re- we getting through this set." Shout out to Bode. But you you <laughs> you ever heard some on this hey. day? Ever heard some on this day? Right right after King Von's crazy story, dog. You say it's a perfect transition. What are you talking about, Graham? Stop playing with me. Hey, all right, off hey. of me, uh, Jizzle. What's yours? <laughs> ben, what's yours? Yo, 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 my mine is you know what I'm saying hold on. I got it, I already got it written down. I wrote it down earlier because I didn't know what it was. It was a crash by Decipher Down. Um it was for WrestleMania 25 because I went there. I was there. I don't know if I said that a whole bunch of times, but I was there and it was when Jordy fought uh, Matt Hardy and then it was the most terrible match I ever saw in my life. Hey, That's hey, put it back up. Put it back up. <laughs> Please, you really be listening to wrestling things with your old lady, right around your car, listening to wrestling things with your old lady for real. Let me tell you something, bro. No, no. (laughs) My boy said Gucci. No, Gucci man. Absolutely not. (laughs) Shout out to Gucci. Hey, my favorite. I don't really know if it counts as really as a a a theme song for a pay per view, but it was like the um, the remake of Running Up That Hill by Placebo. That's it. Hey, you Let's know what? I, I I appreciate y'all bringing this conversation and diversifying our audience because I have no idea what's happening right now. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Why you for it? Like, Dude, D-Generation X. Like, bro, cool. I, I like I tried, I tried to I tried to do that one time playing wrestling theme songs like I like when I'm on the way to church, like I'll put like on, you know, Kirk Franklin or, or oh. whatever. And I'm in the car with my wife or in, in the family. We're on the way. I put in uh what was it? D Lo not yeah, D Lo's theme song when he was like doing his preacher stuff. <laughs> just to see if it would go over, just to see if she was just like, yo, miss a beat. Like, no, right? And didn't know nothing. I was like, hey. <laughs> Jim what? Johnson put out a classic with this one, man. <laughs> she like, oh, this is a nice one. I ain't never heard this one yet. What's, what's, who, who got this? Can you can you burn me a copy? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. Hey, we appreciate everybody for participating in the question of the week. It's, you know, it is what it hey. is, man. Rodney I says, keep. I play I Snow, my baby mom. Bro, what? <laughs> what does everybody want? <laughs> what oh. was the answer? Everybody won. Everybody knows the answer. That's um, hard, bro. There was a report. Valentine's hey, <coughs> Day is on the way. Yes, it is. And we have to move on. Uh, so there was a report this week that, uh, I don't know, Ben, maybe maybe you'd be more suited to tell us about this report that uh, The Rock and Steve Austin may have passed on WrestleMania. Yeah, man. Are you going to tell me these two guys aren't coming to WrestleMania? I don't know who those two guys are. Okay, these two. Those guys. two guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's better. That's better. Cause Young Rock we might be able to get oh, these two guys right. though. Yeah, you definitely get those two guys. You just you, from dudes from Young Rock. You just you know give them two hundred fifty dollars each and a ham sandwich, and they show up, bro. They but show up. Was a, a, a McRib and a you feel me a Black and Mild. You feel me? They pull up. You feel yeah, me? On time, every time. You know what I'm saying? So what's going Yo. on with the Rock and Austin, bro? 
Uh, Dave Meltzer put out, he said, like, they're both of them are not not coming back. They're not coming back this year uh, for WrestleMania. The Rock is reportedly leaving the door open for uh, a match at WrestleMania 40. But, you know, that's it right now. And honestly, with everything that's going on with the bloodline and all that, I, I really think it was a good idea f- for, you know, for them not to try to push to get the Rock back. I mean, like the Rock said, like he's he's not in uh, wrestling shape. And even Roman Reigns got on Jimmy Fallon and said it. He was like, "Yo, man, people talking about you know the Rock, me versus the Rock at this year's WrestleMania or whatever." He was like, I, "I'm facing whoever wins the Royal Rumble." He was like, "But I don't think the Rock's coming back. Uh, you know, he's not in wrestling shape, and it's kind of too late for him to get there. You know, without really pushing it." So. You know, I don't really think we're going to get that this year. But with everything that's going on with the bloodline, it, it would have been complicated to get him in there anyway. Mm, I it, think it would be easier to fit The Rock into a story with the bloodline than to rush the end of it and shoehorn Cody in. Because yeah. The Rock's actually a part of the family. Yeah, but mm. – if the Rock would have won the Royal Rumble, you would have had. I don't. I, I don't know if people would have really been would have been down with that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, I, I definitely I, wouldn't want to know when that. I, I remember when he came back to the title off of CM Punk. Like you, you narrowly missed the crowd, like completely turning on him. Like you narrowly missed that. Like no one was no one was trying to see, you know, twice in a lifetime. It was like, bro, we already we got this last year, bro. What are, what are we doing here? So I'm like <laughs> and then on top yep. and the other thing with Stone Cold, like I think Stone Cold left uh last year on a good note. It's just like, bro, like sometimes it's just best to leave, you know, on a high note. Leave when leave when you at your your hottest. I mean like I would have liked to see him come back and, and do a little something with LA Knight. That would have been cool. I mean, he could still pop up at WrestleMania and have uh, a promo with LA Knight. You could still, you could still give get that. But <laughs> yeah, give him a stun and all that, bro. Because he's like, yo, man, look, I didn't, I didn't work out for the last six months for nothing. I, I might pull up and do a little something. Nah, I'm, I'm not gonna have a full match, but I pull up and do something. Get a WrestleMania check. Mm. They always hand those out. Stan, that's not Young Rock character, yeah, sir. That's Steve up. Austin. Uh, and The Rock, Flex Cavana, and the Ringmaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, at least uh, I didn't put up a uh, Kurt Frost or whatever, yuck. whatever they said. Yep, yep, <laughs> Dude, Shawn Michaels was supposed to be. That's crazy. All right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and move forward. Then I have a question for you guys, actually. Shoot. And uh, and this is just as a part of what I've been thinking about the Royal Rumble, like the, the fallout, and then we'll we'll uh, move this into a larger conversation about the bloodline here in just a moment. Um, but <clears throat> after the Royal Rumble, of course, we got uh, a bunch of returns and uh, surprises, and not necessarily the returns and surprises like you would think, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, a bunch of legends and like shocking returns. It was like, nah, like Piper Nevin is Piper Nevin again, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Asuka is going to, you know what I'm saying, establish a darker personality. We're going to bring Chelsea Green back. Uh, we're going to get Michelle McCool to pull up, uh, you know what I mean? And then we're going to get uh, – Nia Jax to return. Apparently, Nia Jax may or may not have actually signed a new deal. But uh, the question that I have for you is, uh, I'm wondering if it's time for a draft. Are we going to get a draft here pretty soon? Because Raw has three characters that are all like mm, off kilter, uh, edgy, very like dark and like brooding personalities, like. These three, Nikki Cross, Asuka, mm-hmm. and this whole thing that Alexa Bliss is doing. Does Raw have room for all three of these characters right now? Uh, they're adding a bunch of people uh, to the, you know what I'm saying, to the deck. And I'm like, mm, it seems like a little bit of overkill of the supernatural extra yeah. character type thing. Like, uh, for as far as Nikki Cross goes, she's not, not really that prevalent. 
to really count as a, like having a dark personality or something like that. She's not even around like that. Like her at the Royal Rumble was the first time I seen her like pop up in a while. So like I don't really think she's like like that big of a like to be like, oh man, look, oh you you crazy and I'm crazy too. It's like, yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm on camera, bro. I, I got I got it. I'm in the script this week, bro. <laughs> she's been doing a where's Waldo type thing. Like she's been kind of like popping up like behind the scenes backstage. She was like behind the announcers one night, just like peeking over the the announce the little the little barrier or whatever. I don't know what's going on with that. Hey, bro. But um, but you can make an argument for Oscar and Alexa Bliss being on the same show. I think you do need to do a draft because if you're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on this whole thing with like her, Uncle Howdy and Bray Wyatt looks like they're what they're doing. I mean, I don't want it, but it looks like, you know, that's the direction they're going. If that's what you're going to do, you need to have her on SmackDown with Bray. Hmm. Like you need, you need to do that because I, I don't want to see Oscar leave raw. Like that, like she needs to stay over there. I mean, like, yo, I, I mean, like, I'm not to say she wouldn't be good on SmackDown, but it's just like I feel like she does better on Raw versus than you know being on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yolanda in the chat says, "I think it's space for it." Uh, Oscar is bringing back Connor, which I am so here for. Gang, gang. Eddie says, "That's not Oscar. That's Connor." I'm sorry, sir. I, I, hey, bro, look. I'm not an actual wrestling fan. Didn't we tell you that? Like, hey. I don't know. Eight minutes ago. <laughs> hey, man, you can't even you can't even say dark Oscar in these streets or or heel Oscar, or whatever. Like, bro, hey, I know. I'm call, I'm calling you like what I know you as, bro. Like I'm sorry. Um, like Graham said, I, I'm I didn't I wasn't tapped into to Japanese wrestling like that to really you know yeah. know what she was doing over there back in the day before she signed with WWE, bro. I I I'm just finding this stuff out. A lot of fans are just finding this stuff out. You gotta bear with us, man. Like nah. you gotta kind of. Nah. Nah, nah, ain't no, ain't no bear with us. Nah, stand on your own too. That's not her name. Her name is Oscar. <laughs> they're not calling her Connor on TV. Not never. <laughs> How about that? Yo. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm like yo, man. Look, I'm trying to be diplomatic, and you just like nah, okay. bro. Fuck them. <laughs> nah, bro. I'm here today, bro. Not really. Nah, we okay. can't cuss no more. No diplomatic, yeah, nothing. Bro. Listen, her name is yeah, whatever is on yeah. her back. <laughs> And I don't already messed that up today, so <laughs> try again next week. <laughs> right, let's get into it though. Let's get into it though. Let's really get into it though. Bro, we you made it at the me? first 18 seconds. Blood, I was there. Yeah, I know. Um, so let's talk about the bloodline. Royal Rumble Fallout. Of course, y'all already know, you know what I'm saying? If if we're gonna be completely honest with y'all, Cody Rhodes won the men's rumble. He picked Roman. Rhea won the women's rumble, she picked Charlotte. I'm assuming she's going to be over on SmackDown after she beat Charlotte at WrestleMania. We could do the shuffling of some decks here. But let's talk about, I guess, what, 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 what have we been calling it? Cinema? This is art. This is 100% just ugh, magnifique, amazing, high-quality, long-term booking, long-term storytelling, What's the next? Uh, what's the next move, man? What's going on with the bloodline? Is Jimmy out? I mean, is Jay out? What's going on with Sammy? I think, I think Jay is out of there, man. He got on, he got on Instagram and he tweeted out a picture of, um, uh, no, he got on his Instagram live, tweeted out the, no, it's not live stories, tweet, uh, put out the picture of him and Roman and was like, yo, let's run it back. Uh, put out the picture and was like, yo, I'm out. So I think he's out of there. I think it's just like, there's so, like we talked about, there's so many layers to this storyline. When you, when you peel back the layers, there's, there's more and more and more to see. Yo. Salute the cow. Yeah. Facts. Like there's more and more to see. Like you're on the surface level, you got, Roman and and um, Sammy, you got KO. 
and Sammy. And then when you peel that back, you got Jay looking at Sammy get his ass beat and was like, yo, that used to be me. <laughs> that Damn. that was me. That part. That, that was part. getting my ass beat. Like he's kind of realizing Roman put us at odds. So I would be distracted. So I wouldn't break up on out of here. Like it, it, it's like, yo, I think I think he's out of there. I think that was what brought it back. I think he saw him getting his ass beat and was like, yo, man, look. I see myself and Sammy is mm-hmm. like, yo, I, I'm, I don't want to be here no more. Because you got to think like this is the first time that he's seen that since it happened to him. Like nobody else has had this harsh of a treatment to get into the fold since he did initially. Jimmy kind of yeah. just fell in line after a while. Solo just pulled up. Paul Heyman is Paul Heyman. And then, of course, when Sammy gets involved, it's like, yeah. That's when the the initiation process becomes like the real initiation process and, you know, uh, the manipulation and all of that, you know, this dictatorship that he's trying Mm. to run over there. Mm. It was definitely like PTSD Mm. was definitely kicking in on that because he was like he he was looking down. He wasn't trying to make eye contact Um, when Sammy when he yells at uh, Sammy and he was like, hey, man, look. What are you doing? Like I stuck my neck out for you, bro. I, I vouched for you. You are my brother. And he just refuses to look at Sami Zayn, you know, get beat down by the bloodline. Like he saw that initial super kick, but then everything after that, he's just not looking at that. He's just like, bro, I, he's just having a breakdown. And like everybody played a, a role in this. Everybody played like a, a, a big role in this, like not just – Jay, Roman, and Sammy, like, even Jimmy was kind of, you know, showing out with his, like, with his, was like, his hurt. He was like, hey, like, hurting on, like, two sides. One, you were betrayed by this guy that you loved from the beginning. Like, you guys had a secret handshake. You guys made friendship bracelets. You were in the back talking about, like, when y'all was going to parties and everything like that. Y'all was going to Waffle House after the shows. Like, yo, yeah, like I like we was real close from the beginning, and you got the other side of it. He's kind of hurt at by listening to Jay's. Like, yo, man, you calling this man your brother? I, I'm right here. Like, bro, what are you what are you doing? You know, I, it might not be fully mm-hmm. jealousy mm-hmm. that he was feeling, mm-hmm. but it was definitely a pain on some level of just like, yo, hearing. Uh, like y'all, and on top of that, y'all being twins, <laughs> and yo, another you call another man your brother, it's just like, hey, bro, I got choked up for you. Nah, exactly. <laughs> I died for you, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I've been no, with no, no, you no, literally since then. But what am I supposed Go to ahead, do? Just- Jay said, "Listen, look, I wouldn't even bang with this nigga until y'all told me about it. it. Was like I was the last one to get on board, and then now you want to do this? Like that's the, it's just like crazy layers. Like I've seen this on Days of Our Lives 150 times. Oh, it's crazy. Like, well, why? Yeah. Like I would even be talking to this man. Like I was the last one to get on board, and then like now I see this, and now I see what's been going on. I don't need y'all. Y'all need me, and like Solo played his role too because he was just mm-hmm. like." Not even like the hollering and the screaming, like he he you know he put hands on Sammy, but at the end, when Sammy comes out there, or not Sammy, when you know when they leave the ring, Roman is kind of pulling him to the side, like yo man, look, Jimmy he gonna probably follow his brother, Sammy is out of here, like yo you pretty much all I got left, and he was telling him he's like hey Solo. From now on, we're not taking any prisoners, bro. We're at war. This man sounds like Thanos more and more every week. Solo Sokoa is we, babe. <laughs> what do we Yo, think Chuck. happens next year? Because, like, of course, the the, the direction uh, is reported that we're going to see. <clears throat> of course, since we since we have the announcement, it's Cody and Roman at, at Mania. <clears throat> uh, the speculation is that we get the announcement of Sammy versus Roman in Montreal at Elimination Chamber. Uh, since the U.S. title is going to be defended in the chamber rather than the, you know, the the main title, but um, with this next wrinkle in the story, 
how do we go forward with this? Is there a way that, um, like, how does like how do we get to Sammy and Roman? Does Sammy just immediately come out on Friday and just like challenge him to the match? Like, okay, when is uh when is the pay per view? What is the date? Good question. I'll look it up because that's that's a determining factor. Like, if you, if they give <clears throat> Sammy a week to up. breathe. If they give him a week to breathe and you still have like a couple of weeks before the pay-per-view, like I could say, like maybe he comes out next week. But if the, the pay-per-view is like sometime soon, like he he damn near gotta come out there and be like, hey, yo, y'all, y'all, y'all's whooping my ass. Like I got I gotta have a match against against Roman for the title. And it's, uh, February 18th. Uh, so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three I Fridays. Think he comes out. I think he comes out mm-hmm. and I think he comes out and tells him, like, hey, look. Y'all, we we not doing that. Like, I, I gotta have a title match because, like, y'all y'all not just gonna y'all just gonna whoop me in front of everybody, try to pump me out, and then when I stick up for myself, y'all all gonna start whooping on me. Mm-hmm. Roman had PTSD. Like, yo, I don't even think Roman took it that hard in the grand scheme of things. I just think I just think Roman was shocked. Like, yo, yeah. I, I, I like yo, just shocked that he was losing control of the bloodline like he just been manipulating everybody for in, including Paul Heyman for the past however long and just like seeing just one one domino fall it's just like I just can't believe he did that I don't really think it was like pain of just being betrayed because like he's been there and it's mm-hmm. happened to him before I just think like it was just like shock of like how dare he stand up to me and I think it was also a little bit of like, how did I put myself in this position again? Because yeah. like as you you remember like that last year when he uh, had the match in the Rumble in the build against Seth, he was like, I will never forgive you for what you did to us. Like you know, and you hadn't really seen like that side of Roman. Like it, like they've been adding like little like little like additional like pieces of his character and like you feel me like I think that the dynamic of it is like oh when I'm on top I'm like oh you feel me it's me da, 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 da. I'll beat anybody I'll smash them but when I'm out of control it's like I'm crying I'm <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm, I'm bumbling words I'm like nobody nobody loves me like I, I try to help everybody and y'all bro, don't see the good in me and, and that's all real that. stuff it's, bro it's, it's fire. that that's real stuff like we've we've kind of all been there before we go off the deep end you just like yo you, you can't really control yourself. But uh, I got a question for y'all, and I got to, like, check and answer. But that shows that they want family to. more than you, you trust family. You, you don't trust family like that. You you got family more than you trust the uh, people outside. That was the person outside that turned on them. Everybody that turned on them was the person outside. That's why you want to build family. Because you think that Jay would turn on them, which is family. And family never turned on them. But it's always on the outside. So you let the outside take you down. Then, like, what do you have? That's why you gotta make family as strong exactly. as it could possibly be. Yeah. That's why I'm the head of the family. He he like yo, he was screaming, like, yo, you broke my family. You you, you destroyed my family. And that's like like top tier manipulator like status. Like when when you are the one who's been pretty much, you know manipulating your whole family, getting them in line, lining them up the way that you wanted. You put twins, you you pitted two twins against each other by by calling one the other name and just being like, yo, so, you know, what's the matter anyway? Like, just little stuff, like little underhanded things that you use to get them in line and creating bad feelings. And then you're like, yo, when things kind of, you know, don't go your way, you're like, hey, you broke my family. Like, that's that's manipulator Roman Reigns, and I, and I love it. But the question I have for you guys is, uh, where does this storyline rank for you in, in WWE storylines? Like, I don't know, for you could say for the, maybe the past 20 years or even all time. Where does this rank uh, for you? And you can use WCW if you want to, too. Man, I give it. Oh yeah. Okay. Listen. This is this is Sting. You know what I'm saying? Sting. Ninety. You know what I'm saying? Ninety seven. You know what I'm saying? And then this. This two. This is two to me. Two. 
the layers, how long it's going to be, how much it was going to suck, you know what I'm saying, and it didn't suck, ha ha, and you know what I'm saying, it's still working, adding Sammy in there, making Sammy a semi-star, you know what I'm saying, like this is what this is what wrestling is supposed to be about. This is the stuff that you could make, this is the kind of storyline that you can make non-wrestling fans, wrestling fans with, if you break it down, how it's supposed to be broken down. If you break it down like a movie, which is what it is, you can make a, rest, a non-wrestling fan a wrestling fan with this type of storyline. Just like with the Sting one, you might have to tell somebody you know, saying like, "But this dude got paid for nineteen months just to stand up in the rafters and do nothing." Like what? That's the type of what job I want. Like, <laughs> nothing. Good job. Yo, yo, they hiring? Yo, yeah, we definitely not forgetting about uh, Ko Tristan. Yeah, he definitely played his role. Like the elevator lady uh, Joe Button podcast show we went to. Uh, Graham. Bell says two years ago in the Thunderdome, the words that started it all, I hate you. Why you got to do me like that? One can argue this is Jay's story more than anyone's. And once the titles are gone, we back. I don't think Jay get no title. I ain't gonna hold you. Nah, bro. Like <laughs> y'all, y'all keep pushing that. Like when, when everybody's like, yo, so how should Romans, right. you know, how should his title reign end? Everybody's like, yo, man, I think Jay should get the titles. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yo, somebody, uh, one of the little internet websites picked up our interview, uh, with, with Chris Dunn, the former WWE writer for, for those of you that are listening to this for the first time. Um, and they were like, yeah, former WWE writer thinks, uh, 32 year. What did I tell you? 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 <laughs> so it was like, uh, former WWE writer thinks, 32-year-old Montez Ford should be the one. Like, that was the headline. 32-year-old Montez Ford should be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. And I was like, I mean, he did say that. Uh, (laughs) But then I was like, well, I mean, not for nothing. The interview was like six months ago. (laughs) Like, I don't know if he remembers any of this. Yo, I definitely didn't remember, like, I definitely didn't remember saying Chris Jericho couldn't fight. I definitely don't. I definitely don't remember. I checked that part out. I was like, "Yo, this man ain't got no hands." But uh, for this storyline, for me, <laughs> I'll put, I put it above. I put like if we're talking about a, you know a stable storyline and a group storyline, I put it above the NWO. I put it above everything that the NWO ever did, and I'll tell you why. Because the NWO, the high point of the NWO was the formation. Everything after the formation of those three, it all regressed. Like, yeah, we got cool moments with with Sting and, you know, uh, Rodman coming in and doing a couple of things. And, and you had your, like, your world titles, but it, it did get progressively bad. You had the finger poke of doom. You had the way they ended um, Goldberg's streak. You had a lot of like, you had a That's lot strange. of stuff where it just <laughs> went, it just like went off the top right right after that. The bloodlines, uh, the storyline they have, it's gotten progressively better. Like over, like since since Roman turned heel and got with uh, Paul Heyman, it's gotten progressively better. Like the only thing that I can say for this storyline for like, you know, the bloodline and everything like that, like it's had lulls. It's had moments where things were kind of slow. And that's about it. That's about it. Like it had moments like when um Roman wasn't there and they kind of had to pick up the um they kind of had to pick up the pace with the Usos. Yeah. You know, that those were like some slow moments, but when Roman was there and then with them adding in um, Sami Zayn to kind of revitalize the whole storyline and put, you know, a new, a new spin on it. I think, I think this is better than, you know, the NWO. And let me see. uh, G nation says that's debatable. The NWO angle was the height of the pro wrestling boom period. Yeah, it was the height of it, but I don't think, I don't think it was better. Like, you know, more eyes that were on it back then. Like it's like, it doesn't make it better. Like go, like I've watched those WCW. So I'm not even just talking like 
this talking reckless. I've seen those WCWs. I've seen, you know, the storylines when the NWO was coming out, like after the formation, like there's nothing that they ever did that topped the formation. Like everything after that, it just goes downhill. Like there are cool moments, like, don't get me wrong. And I'm not, and that's not saying like me saying this isn't shitting on, you know, the NWO and everything the NWO did. It's just, you know, it's just me saying like, yo, this was well put together everything made sense and it was kind of like like the ending is kind of like when you you know you watch all those marvel movies in order and then you watch like infinity war or you watch endgame and everything starts clicking everything starts making sense when you start picking up on one thing you peel that back and there's another layer and there's another layer and there are all these references and things in there that's what you know this storyline is like <laughs> It's funny the Marvel thing because what I, I said in a group chat the other day I was like this like the the closing angle that they pulled off after the the match with KO that was like a Marvel level post credit scene like Jizzle what'd you say like you had to see it you like you had to like you feel me like you want to see the car you, like you you driving past the car wreck but you like you gotta look at this you can't miss that. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I, uh, oh damn. Just... What the hell happened over there? That's exactly what the bloodline <laughs> stuff was. No, listen, you got to oh, watch it. You got to tell people about it. Like, you're going to tell people about it. This is something that you tell your kids about. Like, Sting, bloodline, there was family. He was up in the Raptors getting paid to do nothing. Same level. Sean says, Hangman versus the Elite. Uh, equals bloodline. Both are that good. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, Hangman versus the Elite was really good. The the uh, you know Bullet Club Civil War, all that sh- all that stuff was good. I saw people comparing the Hangman Elite and the Bullet Club Civil War thing to this, saying it was like, oh, this they're just basically ripping. Like those are completely different stories. Like y'all gotta chill. Exactly. With tribalism. Like oh, I, like that was the other thing. Like. You can enjoy it, and I'm talking, and I'm talking to both sides of it. Like, if you if you would like a WWE diehard, enjoy it. Don't be like, uh, "Hey, man, look, every this beats every storyline y'all got by like ten thousand times, and y'all ain't doing nothing over there." And the uh, and the other side, don't be like like what Graham said. It's just like you know the Golden Lovers, and you know them kicking Kenny out of the Bullet Club. It, it's not like that, bro. I, we can point out the differences. I really don't want to. Because you know we, I, I don't really, I don't really want to talk to you guys about that. <laughs> but there are differences between them. Just like, bro, just enjoy it. Or if you don't like it, don't watch it. How about the biggest difference? None of them dudes is family for real outside of the Bucks. <laughs> none of them are. None of them are family, and I don't, I don't know, like. Cause you know it's like you could beef with your cousin, but it's like at the end of the day, like that's still your cousin. Like you still gotta kick it with him. Like, uh, like you ain't gotta kick it with him, but you gotta see, you gotta see cousin. You feel me on like holidays like, bro, and like little events. I'm still and gonna see, and, like, no, I, I'm still gonna see your grandma's house for Thanksgiving, bro. You gotta deal with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Coach want to leave AEW. He don't want to deal really with the, the the Bucks and all them. He could leave. <laughs> it's a wrap. Yeah, he chilling. <laughs> and he did yeah there you go uh-huh. oh no he did the little <sighs> point to the little wrestlemania sign show them show them dudes love you know what i'm saying it is what it is it is what it is all right you guys want to do predictions let's go for it nxt yes vengeance day all right, I hope everybody's happy about it. We're going to talk about Thank NXT you. this week. We haven't talked about NXT in a few weeks. Why? Because it freaking sucks lately. Anyways, let's do it. All right, so as y'all know, if you don't know, I am the public enemy number one now. That means I, as your reigning and defending champion, mm-hmm. yes, your defending champion, right back at it already with it. You know what I'm saying? What am I doing? Working on the weekend like usual. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Well, what's, nah, what's the bro. first match? Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What, what you gonna say to me? <laughs> nah, bro, I, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say, bro. I ain't got nothing right. to say, bro. All right, well, I'm gonna try to. Uh, if I can get through this weekend, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put something special together for next week's episode. All right, so where we at, man? Let's oh, go. Jesus. North American title is going to be on the line. Wes Lee from the West Side is defending against Dijak. Did y'all hear this man on NXT say he can't let down all his people on the West Side? <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Bro. Jesus, Wes Lee. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, bro. Give me, like, yo, give me Wesley, bro. Definitely sticking with Wesley. Sorry, Dodger. Get the punt, yo. Always. Punisher out of here, bro. Fake ass Punisher. Yo, get, yo, get, yo, yeah. For real, man. Get Terminator face out of here, man. I still know who you were, man. You were, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were were reckoning partner. You were just reckoning partner two days ago. Like, now you're losing. Yo, Yo, fake ass cable. Yes, Tony. Ricky Starks was at the Rumble. It's a, crime, a war crime. How dare you? Yo. How dare you step Bro, back me there. I, I seen so many posts. People like, yo, man, this man going over there while well, we're at war? Dog like, was hey, like, bro. I can't believe they brought back GCD. Exactly when you need him. Right. Serving up his own brand of He's justice. Caught 4K, getting, ready big to, dog. getting ready to lose the West League. Uh, next match, next match. Women's Tag Team Championships are on the line. Actually, let me take this little thing off the screen. Y'all know what we're doing over here, man. Women's Tag Team titles, Katana Chance and Kaden Carter against Fallon Henley and Kiana James. Salute to Kiana James. It is Black History Month. Uh, yeah, <laughs> salute to her. Uh, I'm going with Katana Chance and uh, yeah, Kaden Carter it. to retain. Yeah, bro. I got to retain, too, because if you watch the show, the other side, they got beef with each other. Oh, wait, 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 wait. These are the predictions now, right? These are the, 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 the new wave of predictions. I apologize. Hold on. Hold on. What? North American title. Oh, How's the match going to end? Damn, Pinfall, right. submission. What do y'all think? Damn. Pinfall. Wesley ain't got no submissions. <laughs> exactly. Pinfall for sure. <laughs> I just wanted to check. I just wanted oh, to check. Pinfall. 450 splash. You know what I'm saying? Pinfall. Right, right on top of this Devil May Cry character points. right here. You know what I'm saying? 450 splash. <laughs> cool. That's not gonna get you no extra points. 450 splash. Oh, you yeah. feel me from the from the left side of the uh from the left side of the ring, not the hard cam side. <laughs> so it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh Katana Chance the, and Kater Carter. Mama, yeah. Uh this one I'm also gonna say pinfall as well. Yeah, give me any pinfall. Jill? Yeah, team black ninja regular. Hey, right, bro. Go. All right, so next match, two out of three falls. Apollo Cruz, Carmelo Hayes. Give me I'm going a... with Carmelo Hayes to win yeah. two to one. Ah, ooh, are they are they both going to be pinfalls though? Melo ain't got no uh, ain't got no submissions. I mean, but I mean the ones that are like an interference count out. You know, like I don't know. Pinfalls, both of them. Uh yeah, I give him I give him pinfalls. I give him pinfalls. Yeah, Carmelo yes. Hayes win two straight. You know what I'm saying? The last two. You know what I'm saying? When it falls two and three. You know what I'm saying? But the same move. But the same move. <laughs> Yo, the same move. <laughs> Bro, bro, ain't looking in the future and see that. You ain't see like, oh yeah, man, this man gonna use the same move on me. Crazy. Guess I better move. Right. Move. <laughs> Here comes the gotcha. Fire. Gotcha again. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Nala. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh the tag team championships are on the line in a fatal four-way match. It will be Pretty deadly. Uh, oh, wait, wrong one. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I apologize. Production error. I'm trash. I did not get the new image. Anyways, so the match is pretty deadly uh, versus uh, Gallus versus Chase U versus The New Day. 
And uh, my question to you guys before we answer this is, um, what does it look like if the New Day actually retain here? Bro, this run, this run of them going to NXT was fun, but it's got to end right now. Like, yo, this is, we're at the point where, like, yo, y'all, y'all kind of got to wrap it up. Wrap it up, B. Wrap it up. <laughs> but they get what? what? Exactly. We also still have both tag team titles. I don't know. Exactly. They, they, I mean, like, yo, they can still they can still hang around in NXT if they want to. I mean, but I don't think they should do it with the titles. If it's gonna end, it's not gonna be the pretty deadly, I promise you. It's not gonna be to nah. y'all. Y'all lose it. <laughs> y'all lose it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yo. maybe AOP comes back and does some AOP stuff, but other than that, <laughs> I am not losing no pretty deadly. I'm not losing to none of these guys. Bring AOP back or make or make the brawling brutes come and beat us. There's going to be some SmackDown and Raw teams that come to NXT, and that's going to have to beat them because none of you, none of you dudes, beat me. Period. I guess. I guess Gallus. I'll take Gallus. Yeah, I'm going chase Gallus. Over. Yeah, I'm going with Gallus. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm going with day. Gallus by pinfall. New day. All right. <laughs> new day by. I'm going new day by 450 splash. <laughs> New Day by 450 Splash. That's not in the script, bro. <laughs> I know Deshaun Watson said this is what happened by 450 Splash. You know, I still he, don't have an answer to everything out here. New Day. Uh-oh. Pinfall. All right. Uh, now, women's title. Triple threat. Roxanne Perez defending against JC Jane and Gigi Dolan. I'm going with Roxanne Perez to retain by pinfall. Yeah. Yeah. Give me give me Roxanne Perez. And with that, Roxanne Perez by pinfall for sure. It's her time. <laughs> Mr. All Days All says New Day is going to AEW. Josh, to Josh says Josh says Jizzle is going to start a fed where you can only win by 450 splash. <laughs> yeah, why not? I'm saying 450 splash for everybody. I'm saying shout out to Hoopy Juice. Iron so says like, the Creed Brothers and New Day need to happen soon. So, so it needs to the stomach is a false finish. Is that what you is that what you're talking about? Definitely, 100. percent Big action to count on that. Uh, big action main event. Steel cage match. Brown Breaker versus Grayson Waller. I don't think this is a big action main event. They've done all that they can to to make this match seem uh, bigger or seem like uh, there's a reason for it. But Grayson Waller's losing. Uh, I'm going to let you guys know that right now. Yeah. (laughs) I I like Grayson Waller. I think, like, he's been – I think, you know, he's been trying to get the most out of this. Like, they had a little brawl in um, the Performance Center – they they've been going back and forth in the promos and everything like that. Like, yo, he's they've been trying to make the best out of it, but it's like, yeah, man, just just go ahead and just just get past this so we can get to Melo versus Braun uh, WrestleMania weekend. One hundred percent, that needs to happen. Um, give me Braun by, mm-hmm. by uh, give me Braun by by pinfall. I'm going pinfall as well. Ooh, what if he escapes? Yeah. So they could kind of yeah. like. Uh, Nah, what if what, what if he escapes so they could kind of like okay, Brom wins, but like also like give Grayson Waller a little bit of an out while we figure out what he does stand and deliver weekend, so it doesn't look like oh he got beat beat, but he got like he lost. Oh, like no. Brom goes over the cage, you know what I'm saying? And Grayson trying to get out of the door, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like old school, you know what I'm saying? Like he gets over the cage, he's trying to do it, and then he gives him three four fifty splash at the same time at the. Ten suplexes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, take that. Over the top of the case he's coming out, but he wins. His feet touch first. So when he gets mm. out, he's hitting the 450 splash off the top of the cage. Ken says, Brom wins by spearing Waller through the cage. Nah, we ain't Go doing that. That one, Graham. That definitely sounds, hey, man, hey. Man, trying to cheat. That definitely sounds like some some Shawn Michaels booking. Like, yeah, man, you're just going to. Like, you see this whole side of the cage? It's gonna spear him right through that. Didn't they right do this with like went, Bobby Lashley? Didn't he win like, that though? You know what I'm saying? What if his feet hit first? Go to the cage. Yeah, they did uh, that with they've done that a couple of times. They did that with uh 
Mark Henry did that to Big Show one time, I think. Through a cage or just the, the yeah, ring? Yeah, through the cage. Game? Through the cage. Like, he speared oh, okay. him through the cage. And then, like, they was like, so who win the match? Yeah. And they went to commercial, and they never talked yeah. about who won the match. Big and- Show threw. through um, <laughs> that. All right, Yo, cool. Bring so, back the blue cage, man. That's a – that's Vengeance Day. We got the sign of the recliner. I'll play this again. Yeah, Friday was on. <laughs> Let's get it done. That wasn't supposed to happen. I promise you that was. Now, Jizzle, it's not you, my friend. I got nothing else. Is it me? Already? Yeah, we do have nothing else. Let's get it out of the way. Yo. Holy <laughs> Look at, look, at, look at Ben nodding his head to the song. You know what I'm saying? It's a good week, bro. Nodding your head to the song. Look at how nodding your head to the song, Ben, like your team just won and is going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, man. Just man, like man, that, man, bro. Forget y'all. It, it wasn't even fair. They, they had no quarterback. They had no quarterback, <laughs> man. Their quarterback ain't had no elbow. Count. You know what I'm saying? So that one, that you ain't even got count. no elbow, Lieutenant Dan. You ain't got no elbow, Lieutenant Dan. How? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yo, what did they think was gonna happen? And I was telling, I was telling them, too, bro, I'm saying, so this is what I'm telling them, Ben. I was like, listen, even if he was there, it wouldn't have made no difference. <laughs> Y'all probably would have 14 instead of 24. It's all good, though. You know, they were just yeah, way better. Than it's all good, though. I, I, know, I, like, I was, I was watching God. like Undisputed, and they were talking about like, yo, who they have. Um, Skip was like, "Yeah, man, I got uh, I got the Eagles," and he was like, "I got the Eagles beating them by." Uh, he's like, "I got them narrowly winning, you know, by like maybe like six, or seven points." And Shannon Sharp was like, "Look, man, they," <laughs> he was like, "Look, man, they 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 winning, bro. They take they taking the W." He was like, "Yeah, man, I got them winning by like, so I got them winning by seven points or whatever." And I was like, "You know what, Shannon? You ain't believed in the Eagles all season, bro." You ain't believed in the Eagles all season. Same thing to uh, Richard Sherman out there cheesing last week, talking about, man, you see this team? You see these guys out here? Ain't, ain't nothing stopping these guys. Guess what, bro? What happened? They ran into Jalen Hurts, bro. They ran mm. into Jalen Hurts. They ran into the, they ran into the best defense in the league, bro. They ran into they ran into the team you that got four for the first time in NFL history, four men, double digit sacks. Like, bro, that's what they ran into. Like, what did y'all think was going to happen after that? Yo, what's going on? What's going on, Eve? Like, like, bro, Brock Purdy got. I don't know 42 with on your team, but he got got thrown around by Trey Williams. He's not not one. Yo. That boy got hip toss. You know what I'm saying? He got got an old Stu Hart hip toss. Oh, my God. Like, bro, they, like, bro, Williams. after after that play, when 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 Brock Purdy got injured, I was like, "Yo, I said it's over, bro." I I, I thought we were already gonna win because we had the the home field advantage and we had a better team. But after that, I was like, "Yo, they putting in Josh Johnson." I was like, when they said we putting in Josh Johnson, I was like, "Yeah, this game is definitely over." I, I was like, "Yo, man, almost threw like three interceptions." <laughs> And by the grace of God, they slipped through the hands. Yo. Hey, man. This man, like, yo, and I, when he got the – You're, not, you're uh, talking about the Bay Area legend, Josh Johnson, like that, all right? It's Bay Area legend, all yo, right? Man, I met him. Nah, bro. Chick-fil-A once. He cool. <laughs> so. When he when he got that concussion and he got up and he started laughing, I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, it's over. I said, ain't no, I said, ain't no comeback, ain't no nothing. <laughs> This man got up. Like, he definitely read the script. Like, <laughs> yo, he definitely so, read the script. You got, you had, uh, you had Garoppolo on the sidelines when the fight broke out. He's just laughing his ass off, bro. <laughs> he just cheesing, bro. He read the script. Yo, man, yeah, put your money on him, bro. 
Put your he money says on I got play. big money, you know, uh, big shmoney on the Eagles next week. Ben, tell your squad, don't let me down. But yeah, bro, like I, I was just happy that I was, was just happy Pat that Mahomes? Bosa didn't get the. Yeah, man, I, I was happy that Nick Bosa didn't get anything, bro. And Nick Bosa also says that he's not watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, they're two great quarterbacks, but guess what? It's too much black on there. I'm not watching it. Look at that. Like, and the other thing, like, uh, not today, y'all, you know like, let man. us, like, bro, watch the puppy bowl. You know what I'm saying? You know, white people love like, those. Bro, facts. But, like, hey, y'all let us have this moment to say, like, yo, there's this first time ever two black quarterbacks are going up against each other in the Super Bowl. Let us have this moment instead of, like, because I've, I've been on NFL Twitter and I've seen more posts than I care to see about, well, you know, it's not about race. Let's just – how about let's just say that these are two, you know, great quarterbacks going up against each other at the Super Bowl. And I'm like, yeah, these are two great no. black quarterbacks going up against each other at the Super Bowl <laughs> for the first time ever. Like, what do you want? Right, right. What's the difference, right? Like, Let me tell you, when I, when I saw Cole Cabana – just like, bro, how how you make everything <laughs> in, how you make everything for the past four hundred years uh, about race? But when I start bringing it up now, it's like, yo, we don't want to talk about that. Why why we got to talk about that? It's a time and a place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We already can't teach it. We already can't teach in the AP classes in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So why talk about it in the Super Bowl, right? You know say this is my sport. This is my sport. But uh, yeah, I got them. I uh, got the Eagles winning by um seven hundred and twenty-two points, and then um, I hope Mahomes doesn't win anything. You only have one leg, just like Jalen Hurts has one arm, so it's even. Except your team is terrible. Bang! Uh, but bang! Let's talk about bang, the refs. So like, bang, ref, bang. hey, listen, refs suck. Refs suck everywhere. The refs, everywhere. <laughs> the refs decided a whole bunch of games, um, in football and in basketball. So they're gonna get into basketball. Hey, because I saw it LeBron was throw a fit like a kid at Duty Mellon that did <laughs> extra. <laughs> it was in the script. Defend your man. The rest was just following along. Le- 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 LeBron is not right. Le- LeBron was acting like Vanessa Williams in um, Soul Food when she found out that her husband was sleeping with Faith, and that was crazy. Running through the house with knives. Yo. Yep. Sorry. Go. Oh! Pat Bev came over there like, "What is she doing here? Look at the camera." Yo. Defend it, man. No. <laughs> Yo. So, hey, you really think the NFL <laughs> scripted, bro? You really think the, the NFL got scripts? The refs need to go. They need to go. All of them. Yes, says Arian Foster. I do think it is. <laughs> do I think it is? Know what I think it is? Because we talked about this earlier. Listen, Cam Newton, Cam Newton went 15 and 1 and had 750 touchdowns. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he forgot how to uh, he forgot how to fall to fumble in the Super Bowl against Von Miller. Von Miller had a rat tail back then. I ain't afraid no Von Miller with a rat tail. Get up out of here, man. He definitely wrote that. I don't know who wrote that part. It was probably it was probably Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent, like, he wrote some shit like that. Can trust no black Troys in the world. <laughs> I only know one black Troy, and that dude is definitely not to be trusted. Oh, <laughs> Brady's retired again. Do we believe it this time? No. Nah. Is he out? Is he walking out the door? I think. Is he I think leaving that... his keys on the table? No. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if he leaves this time. Like, bro, you fooled me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Can't get fooled again, bro. Hey. Like, I, it might just be a ploy to him to get uh, Giselle back. I don't know. Bro, pulled up. I know, bro, pulled up in the driveway. I was like, yo, man, I'm going to get my girl back. It I'm sorry. I saw it. Saw a Hellcat sitting in the driveway, started crying in the started crying in the car. <laughs> Yo, this man, I'm like, bro, this is really what you this is really what you left your entire family for, bro. It's shitty <laughs> season. Yeah. And then then you got the nerve to to read your script for next season and was like, hey man, look, 
Oh, so I'm going. Let's go eight and ten. So, oh, so so this is what y'all got for me next season. All right, bro. I'm just going ahead and retire. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go right, catch right. this uh, 375 million dollar deal over here with Fox or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And run it up that way. I really imagine Tom Brady like sitting outside the house, like in the rain, and like the image that I'm seeing is black and white. Uh, you feel me? And he's like sitting in the car listening to Bow Wow out of my system. Uh, you feel me? And, and, and like Giselle, about, she she commented on that too. <laughs> she right, commented right. on that too. She was like, "Yeah, man, I just hope like you know the next chapter in your life is, is great." And I was like, "Yeah, she definitely got over him, bro. She talking to him like she future the like, devil, my guy." Yo, bro, Yo. hit the boy with a Vince McMahon tweet. <laughs> hit him with a Vince McMahon tweet. Yeah, for Wish sure. You well in the future, Yo, man, my TV. new man is, is younger than you, <laughs> and will beat you up. <laughs> I'm gonna hook you up with your yeah, own like, arm if you if I want him, if I tell him to. My bad. Like on Yo, top of Tyler that, the deal that you signed for for bad. Fox, the deal that you signed for that you signed, like they literally told you, like, yeah, bro, you can take this deal whenever you want. Like, that's how much Fox wanted you to come over there. And you was like, nah, man, let me go embarrass my entire legacy and play another year. For sure. Twice. Ooh, Pro Bowl. Same thing. You know. Listen, who's here? Listen, Tyler Huntley's a quarterback. Carr's going to get another chance to get some more money, and neither one of them leaked to me because I'm not watching any of it. So, ha ha, I'm not watching any of it. Get rid of the Pro Bowl entirely. All Star Weekend. Starters and announced. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got threes, of course. Duh. LeBron was number one because um, who else was going to be? LeBron and Giannis. Um, let's get that going. Look at Zion, Luca. The MVP, uh, Jokic, uh, we got threes again, you know what I mean? Durant, he ain't probably even going to play. He hurt. Donovan, Jason Tatum, saying who got away with a foul. That made LeBron cry like a girl. And um, he's going to be there. So uh, shout out to Kyrie. He deserves to be that. I'm saying even halfway through it. I'm saying he's the Brock Purdy of the season. Kyrie Purdy is what I'm calling him. Now I'm calling him Kyrie Purdy because he only played half of the season. He only played half of the season. To, uh, to, and then he's still talking about being, him, the, uh, being an all-star. Like Kyrie Purdy. Fun. It's just like, bro, they was mad. Like, like, how you mad that Kyrie is a starter and Steph is a starter? Like, they're, they're like they're not averaging thirty-seven and seven apiece. Or oh, you, Josh should be there. Like, well, you know what I'm saying Steph beat Josh. You know what I'm saying on on one shoulder, and Kyrie just literally dropped twenty points every quarter, every fourth quarter for the last nine games. So, uh, yeah, I think he, I think they should be starters. Luka's the MVP. Right. <laughs> Jokic is like, no, I'm the MVP. Luka's like, no, here's another fifty piece. You're not the MVP. Jokic. Now the problem is who's going to be the um because you know this is a fan vote. Who's going yes. to be the I got um no that's what that's what Jaw's going to be. All the people that y'all mad about Jaw's going to be there. Um who else supposed to be there? Um Lori Marketing. I hope Lori Marketing makes it there. You saying Utah has been a surprise? You know what I mean? SGA up in um OKC. He'll probably be there. Um shout out to um Demontis Sabonis. Talk about like the beam. We'll talk. Timothy Thatcher um, of Sacramento Kings, you know what I'm saying? Right, He's probably wearing bones. a um, – yeah, MB got snubbed. You're right. Yeah, but MB be falling down too much, you know what I'm saying? He be falling down like Michael <laughs> Douglas, and I don't like that. Yo. So tell him to get that together, <laughs> and then maybe I'll uh, – <laughs> then maybe I'll make, make him starter. He's not well, better yeah, than didn't find. James Harden team. So James Harden there, little babies there. And, damn, man, who else could be on the reserve? Like, Ja – uh, I'll have Dylan Brooks there just so I can laugh at him. And <laughs> Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> He's like, yo, I got Dylan, but I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's, uh, that's really all I got, man. Ronnie said, yeah, he just cooked Joker. Hey, yo, check out Patreon for my real answer. Yeah. AD, go. oh, yeah, AD will probably be on the team. You know what I'm saying? They'll probably put Russell on the team, which is which is ridiculous. But you know, <laughs> I guess <laughs> whatever. <laughs> hey, man. Crazy, crazy. Just crazy. I'm just here to I'm just here to watch Steph drop twenty points again. Again. I hate sports. And that's it. <laughs> that's all. Down the Marco, Marco, Marco. 
I have one last thing to say to you wrestling fans. I noticed that there were some people that were upset about the Royal Rumble press conference. Oh, these are softball questions. They're not asking them for the real juice. Why would they do this? This is what WWE press conferences is like. The journalists are po po po. These are suckers and all that. Like, aren't aren't these the same people that are at the AEW press conferences? I'm just I'm just saying. These are all the same people. Asking so. the same questions. And look, bro, look, if y'all inviting me and try and give me a pass, come back there, I'm not going to rock the boat, bro. I'm, I'm still bang, trying to come back bang, here, bro. Bang, right. Bang, bang. <laughs> like, what am I going to come out there and ask you, like, hey, man, so so what's going on with Vince and the company? I, why, why am I going to get up and say that during the press conference? When y'all, who y'all selling to? Like, they're going to be like, hey, bro, look, glad to have Stupid. you here this time. Don't ever bring your ass back here. <laughs> You see what happened in the last five months? Everybody asked Tony Khan. So what about what about CM Punk and what's going on with it? Not talking next, about it. Next question. <laughs> next question for sure. Anyways, we'll see y'all on the next it. episode. Until then, make sure y'all stay tapped in, stay tuned in, stay dangerous to all the socials at the enemies P3 on all social media platforms. If you ain't tapped in with the Facebook group, you might want to go ahead and do so. If you're not following on uh, Twitter, Instagram, I think I already said that. I probably already did. Anyways, I'm hot. I'm going to go smoke again. Uh, so, uh, bam, uh, patreon.com slash public enemies. Three dollar tier, five dollar tier, ten dollar tier. Get in where you fit in. We appreciate you. I go by the name. Oh my God, Graham! I am the public enemy number one, and we'll see what happens this weekend with the Vengeance Day predictions. Jizzle, tell them where to find you, my G. Listen, man, Doug Hemadome in the Hemadome building. You know what I'm saying? I'm turning the title into the Hemadome place. You know what I'm saying? It's me. You know what I'm saying? Follow all the Patreon, like he said. You know what I'm saying? All three tiers, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna win to get my belt. Back and it's gonna be lit. How at you put? Hey, well, the former. Hey, yo, chill with that former shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> chill on that, bro. Hey, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at underscore sunrise underscore. You know, we just gonna have to see what it is next week. Yeah. Until then, on GLD, please take care of yourselves and each other. And we um, I just want to say thank you all, and as always, fuck everybody else. I love y'all.